It's really percentage. innovative, isn't it? It is. It's and very this innovative. wasn't available a year ago. Um, well, not that you know of. Not that I know of. I, I hadn't found out how to, how to export from my Powerwall a year ago. So it didn't even cross my mind at that point. So. Octopus and other suppliers are now running a program whereby they have saver sessions. And that is when the grid is extremely heavily used and the price of extra power from pika plants or whatever is very high. And during those periods, they're offering money back if you use less power. The problem with me is that I was using no power in those periods because I've got a house battery. So it occurred to me a week ago to have a look to see whether they would also pay if I exported during those periods. And I found that they would. So during the latest saver period on the 15th of December, I found out how to export from my Tesla Powerwall and earn money from it. First of all, if, if you've got the app or, or logged on to Octopus online, go to Octoplus and then it'll show you information about the saver sessions. So these are the saver sessions that have occurred this year. So I, I signed in on the 16th of November and the 29th of November. And basically I saved no power because I wasn't using no power either time. A couple of them that I missed. But on the 15th, they're still working out the full details of the payment. I signed in and exported 10 kilowatt hours to them. Did they give you a rate for that? They did. If you subscribe to alerts from Octoplus, they will send you a, a message. This is a, a view of my, my WhatsApp. Um, and you can see for the 15th of September, December, they see, say use less power between five and six and you'll pay, be paid £2.25 per kilowatt hour. That's a massive amount. It's, it's huge. I mean, if you think I'm buying power at seven pence, that's about a, th a 30 to one. Yeah, 30 to one difference. More, in fact. I also believe from what I've read, they'll pay me my normal export rate as well. So in, that, in other words, that'll be £2.40. But I am buying the power at 30 pence to fulfil that, that on, need. On this occasion? On this occasion. I found out how to program it for the power saving mode. And as soon as I did that, it started charging the, the power wall up for me. You can see in this screenshot, it's actually taking power from the grid. So what, so what actually happened is you realised the alert was on. Yeah. You realised you could get a premium rate over a certain time. Yeah. You then decided to start charging your battery up, even though it was the middle of the day. What I, what I did is I discovered how to program the power wall to export power. So with the Tesla power wall app, you see that? Yep. Um, I can go to settings on the app and Powerwall and then um, I can hit utility rate and this is my normal setup so between um, 11.30 at night and 5.30 in the morning I have an off-peak rate and then for the rest of the day I have a peak rate. Uh, I've put it as mid-peak, I'll explain why in a second. And then if I go to the tariffs you can see I've programmed in the nighttime tariff, which is a buy price of seven pence. And during the day, it's actually 30 pence, but I put it at 40 because I don't want it buying any power in the day unless, um, unless I instruct it to do so. So that's my normal setup. But what I can do is I can modify this. I can now edit the schedule. So if I edit the schedule, I can add another time period. So what I did was add a time period. So this mid peak period here, I could um, add it as peak. And then I can, with that, with the peak, I can then go and edit the, the, the pricing of it. So at the moment that peak is, hasn't got a buy or sell price. So I can go in and say buy price. I'll leave it at, I'll put it quite high. Cause again, I don't want to, if you tell it something too low, it might buy it and then. But if I put the sell price now at two pounds 25, so I've now set that. And if I save it, I've got to be careful because it's probably going to start charging my battery now because that doesn't apply today. Save changes, home utility rate plan. So then then the power wall, you probably see it start switching to charging up. But effectively, that's what I did. And so it knows that during this period of five to six, the the rate is going to have a very high sell price. OK, so then I can go back to the screenshot. So. Having set that up, I did do it quite late in the day, so it was only a couple of hours before the saver period, it immediately started uh, charging. How, so, how much notification do they normally give you of this? Um, is it 24 hours? Typically 24 hours. 
Yeah, typically 24 hours. I think this was, was a surprise one, they called it, but it was was about 24 <laughs> hours. Some of them they can see further ahead. And did they give you an alert? Yes, on, ping what, a, pings on? on WhatsApp. If you sign up through Octoplus, mm. you get an alert. Okay. And when the alerts come through, you can even automatically put the session in your in your Google Calendar so that it'll ping up on the day to remind you to, to do that. So as soon as I had programmed it, it started charging the file, put the power wall. So it was pulling in 5.4 kilowatts from the grid and um, charging 5 kilowatts into the power wall. Um, and this, was, this shows the schedule that I had um, with the off-peak rate as it was. Then I have a mid-peak, which is a normal one. And I just stood, stuck in this one hour with a very high sell price that, that I had. Um, so that shows the prices that I had on the that I set in the power wall. And then come five o'clock when this period started, you can see it immediately shifting. So you can see now the hook, the, the battery is discharging and it's supplying 4.5 kilowatts to the grid. We, we made an effort to minimize home use. So we postponed our cooking of our meal from until 6 p.m. when this period was over. So, we, but we kept the lights on and everything else on during, in the house. So the power was supplying a small amount to the house, but the majority to the grid. Did you totally discharge your battery in that time? No. So this is the end of the period. So it's now got back to, it discharged in the, um, a total of uh, just under five kilowatt hours. Um, and that would, have, that would have earned me at least 10 pounds um, from that short period. This again shows what's happening with the power wall. This is a view of the grid discharge from the power wall app. So what you can see here is it's charging up at night as normal and the very low cost rate I have. And then through the day, it was doing a little bit of discharging because I had some solar and I hadn't programmed it before that point. It would have held on to that solar if I programmed it sooner. But this is the point at which I told it there was going to be a, a cheap power period at 5 p.m. So it immediately started filling the battery. And then at 5 p.m. just switch to exporting. So this this square wave here is the one hour of export to the grid. And you can see up here, the total export during the day was 5.3. Just under five was in this period. Fascinating. They're now giving batteries with no VAT from the 1st of February, is it? They are from the 1st of February. So, so that means even, you know, I could buy a battery even if I don't have solar. Yeah, you could. And then participate? Would Octopus let us participate yep. in this? Yeah, they're very happy to, to let you do it. They're, Even if you don't have solar? Yep, they're happy for you to buy it at cheap rate and then sell it back to them. That's what the grid needs. It needs storage and it needs... Um, so if I buy a battery, um, what's your test at 12 kilowatt hours? 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Of usable capacity, yeah. Yeah, so if I bought that, I could run my house off it, my heat pump off it or whatever. Yeah using cheap electricity at night yeah. during the daytime and participate in schemes like this. You can. And, and it's interesting because there's been, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of these schemes. And they vary from two hours down to one hour. So I think there's been one of two hours, one of one and a half, and the rest have been one hour. Um, so what's that? Let's say six. Six, so probably eight hours of these schemes. And if you can make £10 an hour... That's eighty pounds, which would more than offset my bill for that period, for that month, for that for that month. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's a huge uplift. It's thirty x what you'd pay for the power. And what actually triggers these periods? Do you know what it is? It's um, the 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 grid basically they they look ahead to the point to determine uh, power prices and. Every day between four, four and seven, there are peaks. And if that peak then coincides with, say, low production from wind or solar and so forth, then they have to commission very expensive gas peaker plants to come in to, to meet the needs. So if you can defer your usage, you're helping the grid enormously and they'll pay you for it, basically. And if so more and more people who can buy batteries yeah. and who actually join Octopus and do this sort of thing will actually not only help themselves, but help the grid. That's true, but and also most people can join these saving sessions without buying a battery. Now, if you normally use, you know, do your quick cooking between five and six, and if you're prepared to do it an hour later, then then you can be paid still similarly very high high rates. Octopus is definitely the leader in the field, in my view, in terms of this innovation. 
And it's interesting with Octopus, they recently did a survey to see which battery would you like to be integrated next? Because at the moment, obviously, I'm doing this manually with, your Tesla. The, with a Tesla. In the ideal world, you would just tell them that you want to participate and let them program the battery. So I think they're trying to move to the point where they can do it, where they actually control the battery with your permission to do these things. And they're also looking at heat pump controls. They asked in the survey, which heat pump would you like integrated? So again, I said the same thing. And then and what I anticipate they'll do is they'll, you know, if they get a very cheap period, they'll just heat the hot water in the tank up to a very high temperature because, they, you know, they've got spare power or they might sh turn your heat pump off for very short periods, maybe yeah. half an hour or something. But in your previous video, you talked about octopus intelligent or intelligent octopus. Right. And that was to do with charging your car, wasn't it? And they choose when they charge the car. That's right. So they, they would do the same thing with batteries and heat pumps. Yeah, fantastic. Um, it, it really just shows the change, isn't it? It That's does. going on. Going back to the, the phone settings, so if I go to Powerwall, um, if you don't have the ability to export everything, I didn't have that, you can contact Tesla and tell them what your grid exporter limit is and they will allow your battery to export. So with energy export, I can choose because I have this facility just to export solar. I tend to leave it on that one, particularly this time of year or everything. So if you set it, you need to set it to everything so that it knows that it can discharge from the battery okay. um, in these situations. But I'll, in, in the links, I'll put the contact details for Tesla so that you can contact them and request this facility for your power. Do other battery systems have this facility? Because you're talking about Tesla. Do you know of any others? Yeah, there, there are others. Um, I don't know the specifics. So I headed over to Google to see which batteries were integrated with Octopus and discovered this Octopus green page um, works with Octopus and they actually supply a whole list of boilers, um, smart heating control, smart ventilation control, solar PV battery storage, Lux Power, Solex battery storage, charge points, eco ohm, wool box, voltware, heat and hot water cylinders, all working with. Octopus, so it's well worth heading over and having a look at this page. Octopus are trying to move through and do more and more of them so that they can effectively use batteries to help the grid and to pay the, the battery owner. And, and I think if people want to comment about if there's any other way of programming the Tesla to do this, please, please let me know. But I must admit, I wasn't even aware the Tesla could export power until quite recently. And then it suddenly hit me that I could program it to export during these saver sessions. Do you have any idea of how many people are taking part? Have you seen it? Good question, I don't know. Hugh forwarded it on to me, an email he'd received from Octopus regarding saver sessions. And it says, the energy you all saved was equivalent to switching off an entire gas power station throughout each session, saving over 140,000 kilograms of CO2 emissions. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's massive, isn't it? It really? is. Because we talk about other countries like South Africa having power outages. I know India does as well, yeah. um, had them on occasions. And by us all working together, we can actually try and reduce That's them. right. And, and the, the benefits of them passed on to the, the customer as well. So where do you see this going eventually? You, you talked about Octopus being able to not only do Octopus intelligent charging of cars, but also the controlling heat pumps, controlling batteries. In the US and other places Tesla run a virtual power plant and I imagine Octopus will be looking at the same thing rather than using these huge fixed battery sites that are sort of grid scale they can use thousands of home batteries to effectively do the same thing and in a way you can argue that they're slightly better because they are embedded in next to users so when I was exporting five kilowatts it was being used in this road somewhere and reducing reducing power on the, on the road so I suppose that's the ultimate. In other words, you, you know, it takes account of the variability of power and the variability of consumption and helps to smooth those two to, to keep the grid as low cost as possible. And the benefit to the government and the grid is it's us private people putting our money in. Yes, that's right. As opposed to them having to pay for another big plant or... And and, and the benefit in there, and, there, and they have to reward, reward the um, battery owners of accordingly so you get paid for the investment you've put in 
but yes, it's a way of incentivizing others to invest to get mutual benefit. And and a, a previous video of yours was payback on a battery was four years. Yes, and and the payback calculations change all the time. I mean, this will change it, for instance. Yeah. I think the other point to make is, by doing this, I'm not only saving money for myself, I'm saving money for other people. Because oh. even the people who don't have a battery, if, if more and more people do this, then the prices at those peak periods will come down for everyone. So, uh, and they Because they're not having to put on these expensive passes. That's right. So, so it's, that's damaging the environment. That's right. So I think people, if they think you're sort of <laughs> doing something to take money off them, that's totally not true. It's the opposite. But yes, it, it benefits everyone. So I'm sure there'll be people who think I'm... Um, you know, battery users are taking money off others in the grid. That's not, not what happens. Yeah, fascinating. Thank you very much.